a friend just go hey jasmine danielle hey beautiful child of god it's jasmine and welcome to my channel hey jasmine danielle and welcome to my first ever bible study video <laughs> Consider me your Bible study buddy for the next four weeks. I am finishing up Jonah, the book of Jonah, and that is what the series is about. Today we're going to be going over chapter one of Jonah, and for the next four weeks, once a week, I'll be uploading a new chapter. The story of Jonah is a story that I'm familiar with, and you might be familiar with too from your childhood. I personally went to a Christian private school, so Jonah and you know Noah and the Ark, and this is the story of Jesus especially his birth story, are like popular stories that I know about. But now as an adult, the story hits differently. You know what I mean? So my goal is just to keep this very casual, very conversational. I'm literally wearing slippers <laughs> while I film this. I just have my Bible. This is the She Reads Truth Bible. And this is my newest journal where I take notes. So if you have your Bible with me, go ahead and get it out. I think that would be the best way to go work through this video. You can watch it and maybe come back to it later and actually do the Bible study or you can do it alongside me. So of course, I will touch on some things that I picked out from the scripture, but I might not touch on things that you might pick out. So feel free to comment down below some lessons that you learn or takeaways from this video or from the chapter because we're learning together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into chapter one. All right, so before we hop into chapter one, I do want to give you a little bit of a background because it's really important to understand the historical context of the scripture you're reading because that'll give you a better understanding as to why things are happening the way it was, especially if it's coming from the Old Testament, but Jonah is in the New Testament. I mean, my Bible actually gives historical context and stuff before you actually get into the chapter, which is really nice. Jonah's a prophet, so Jonah was called to preach to the city of Nineveh, a major Assyrian city filled with cruel people who were longtime enemies of Israel. Assyrian artwork emphasizes war, including scenes of execution, beheadings, and torture. And this explains Jonah's reluctance to preach to this infamous city of warlike people. So keep that in the back of your head as we work through chapter one. Chapter one. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, Sana, and Matai. Get up, go to this great city of Nineveh, and preach against it, because their evil has come up before me. Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went into it to go with them to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. But the Lord threw a great wind unto the sea, and such a storm arose on the sea that the ship threatened to break apart. The sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his god, little G. They threw the ship's cargo into the sea to lighten the load. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down to the lowest part of the vessel and had stretched out and fallen into a deep sleep. That reminds me of something. I'll get to that later. The captain approached him and said, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up. Go call to your God, call to your God little G. Maybe this, this God will consider us and we won't perish. Come on, the sailors said to each other. Let's cast lots. Then we'll know who is to blame for this trouble we're in. So they cast lots, and the lot singled out Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us who is to blame for this trouble we're in. What is your business, and where are you from? What is your country, and what people are you from? He answered them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of the heavens, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were seized by a great fear and said to him, What is this you've done? The men knew he was fleeing from the Lord's presence because he had told them. So they said to him, What should we do to you so that the sea will calm down for us? For the sea was getting worse and worse. He answered them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea so that it will calm down for you. For I know that I'm to blame for this great storm that is against you. Can you imagine what the sailors were thinking? Throw you into the sea? Are you crazy? Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but... They couldn't because the sea was raging against them more and more. So they called out to the Lord, Please, Lord, don't let us perish because of this man's life, and don't charge us with innocent blood. For you, Lord, have done just as you please. Then they picked up Jonah, and they threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. The men were seized by great fear of the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. The Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish 
three days, three nights. So that was chapter one. So the first thing I wrote down in my notes was that Jonah ran away from his assignment. He even paid a ferry to flee from God's presence, which is impossible. How many times in our lives have God instructed us to do something or we felt led to do something and we didn't want to do it? And so we were like, God, are you sure? We start questioning God. And sometimes we just like absolutely run away from the very thing that he's calling us to. Maybe you were in a situation where you wanted to go to a certain university if you're a college student or you wanted a certain job if you're looking for a job or you wanted to live in a certain city and you've been praying about it faithfully and God essentially instructed you to go somewhere else other than the place that you wanted to go. He's calling you to a place that you're unfamiliar with, that you're uncomfortable going to. And so naturally you're like, God, I don't want to do that. And you do the opposite thing. Maybe you choose to go to the school that he told you not to go to or to get the job that you told him not to get or you move to the city that he told you not to move to. You might not try to physically flee away from God's presence, but you're fleeing from his word. And that's, that, that comes with consequences, which we saw in the story. There was a great storm and Jonah had to get thrown overboard and then he was swallowed by a fish while well, that well, a giant fish some people say well some people say it's just like a giant fish I'm not gonna get here into the little weeds and the details but the end of the day it is impossible to flee from God's presence because he's always with us he says that in the Bible that he would never leave us nor forsake us so to think that Jonah can just shell up some money and be like okay take me somewhere far away from God um, I don't want I don't I don't want to like where he's where he's calling me and something else that I actually learned from a commentary and it blew my mind when I learned about it Nineveh the place that God called Jonah to was towards the east but Jonah was fleeing to Tarshish which was over on the west side near Spain so get this God is calling Jonah to go east Jonah is going the opposite direction, the opposite direction to Tarshish, where it was even called um, the end of the earth kind of area, where he was going the opposite direction. He, wa he wanted so badly to flee from his assignment and flee from God that he went the opposite direction <laughs> that he was supposed to go. And I thought that was a really cool thing to kind of think of to give me a better understanding of the scripture. Now, my second note that I made while reading the chapter is that Jonah was asleep. He was at a deep, he was actually in a deep sleep. Like he probably was slobbering, you know, snoring real hard and not moving. Um, he was in that deep REM sleep. And he was at the lowest level of the boat. And the sailors were throwing cargo overboard, thinking that maybe if they lightened up the boat, that it would it would be able to get through the storm. And I wrote down that they didn't know that Jonah was the burden on the ship. Jonah was weighing the ship down. Like when you need to think about it, he was asleep at the very lowest bottom of the ship. Where you know, if you put a lot of say you're packing something in a box. If you put really heavy stuff at the bottom, it's going to weigh the box down. And so you have to remove the heavy stuff to lighten up the box. Well, they thought that the cargo was the problem. But the cargo wasn't the problem. It was Jonah and his disobedient butt that was the problem. He was the problem. He was the reason why the story was happening to the sailors. And two things on that. One, that reminded me of the story of Jesus where he was sleeping in the boat during a storm and the the disciples were freaking out saying the storm it's, it's getting worse and everything and Jesus happened to calm the storm but the opposite happened with Jonah Jonah um, there's a lot of parallels between Jonah and Jesus by the way but Jonah was the reason for the storm and he couldn't calm it and the only way he could calm it if he was to be thrown overboard and then a second thing is that came up in my mind was that Jonah and his disobedient self was causing all the stuff to happen to people who who would just happen to be associated with him. So your disobedience can not only cause consequences for yourself, but it can cause consequences to other people. You know, um, to other people, not just the sailors on the boat, but the people of Nineveh who needed to repent. And if Jonah didn't do his assignment, then they're not gonna repent and destruction was gonna come on them. So applying that lesson to your life is that your obedience is not for just yourself. Your obedience is for other people. You obediently showing up to that school that you're supposed to be called to, to that job that you were called to, to that city that you were called to, is if there if it's a call for a reason. God did not just do it just to just to say I'm all great and stuff. He did it because there's a reason why he needs you in that area. A third note that I made was that all the sailors called out to their own gods, little G, but at the very end they vowed to the God, capital G. So this was this was in verse 16. So they had just finished like throwing Jonah into the sea 
and the storm had just ceased. And in 16, it says, the men were seized by a great fear of the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. It says to fear the Lord in the Bible, but that is not simply a fear of like being scared, but, a, but more of like an awe for him, a reverence for him to know that he is the one and the only. He is God. He is set apart in his own category. Nobody can touch him. And they firsthand witnessed the power of God and they were like, oh my goodness, he is real. Literally what Jonah prophesied, like throw me into the sea and everything would be okay, happened. It came true. They, at that moment, they could not deny that God is real and they swapped their little gods for the God. There is transformation that takes place too when you are obedient in your assignment that God will work through and through you in ways that will show his power to other people to where their eyes will be open and they can start believing, you know, just in your obedience. Yes. The fourth thing that I wrote down is that Jonah said that he is a Hebrew man and that he serves the Lord, but his actions didn't line up. So this came from the verse, verse 9, when the sailors are freaking out and they're like, tell us who's to blame. Our, our lot said that you are the one to blame. Who are you? Where are you from? What is your business? Why are you here? And in verse 9, he answers, he says, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of the heavens who made the sea and the dry land. That scripture showed me that Jonah does believe in God, that he does serve him with his whole heart. But the fear that he has has caused him to, his actions not to line up with um, his level of faith. So your level of faith have to, has to line up with your actions. Because you believe in God, you will have to operate differently from those who don't believe in God. And I said here, you cannot love the Lord and then not follow his commandments. Part of loving the Lord is taking him and believing, believing him at his word and doing what he says to do. So in Jonah's case, if God t told him to go to Nineveh, he should have obeyed and trusted that God was going to be with him even in such a scary, daunting city as Nineveh. For you, if God told you to go to a certain school or go to a certain job or go to a certain city and you're over here like, I don't know, God, I love you, but I don't know, I love you that much to follow your commandments. Do you, do, you, do you really love God with your whole heart like he asked you to? And that's something I have to be convicted of all the time um, because I say I love God, but then there's times where he would instruct me to do something and I'm scared to do it. Um, but the best way to show His lo your love for him um, is to follow his commandments because he is your loving father and that he wouldn't ask you to do anything that he's not already going to be there with you or to give you the resources of the people to help you get there and the last note that i made personally is that the more the sailors tried to row harder through the storm the worse it got if you notice it said the, they tried the road to dry land and the storm got worse and it got worse and so when we experience storms in our lives we have to give up control at that time the more they tried to uh, fix the problem the more they tried to escape the problem on their own strength and own accord the storms got worse have you ever done something where you're trying to work harder and harder at something and it just seems like nothing's working like it feels like you're swimming up upstream in a river where everyone else is swimming downstream you're working against resistance and everything if you're experiencing resistance in that sense then it's a sign that you just need to give up control and let and let and surrender and let god just lead you where you need to be going. There's no need to fight what you already know you have to do, if that makes sense. So those are my notes in terms of what I read in scripture. I just want to close off with some things that I got from the commentary that I thought was really important to kind of take with me and for you to take with yourself as we move, as we continue to move through the book of Jonah. One is don't make decisions based off of impulses. We are emotional beings as humans. Some people, more, some more than others. Um, I'm more emotional than others in my family. And so there's times where I might listen to my heart, which the Bible says is deceitful, or I might make a decision based on how I feel versus kind of taking a moment to do it from a sound mind to kind of think about it some more. Jonah, after he was called by God, immediately was like, struck by fear and so he was going off of that emotion his default emotion and he acted off of that and ended up paying for a boat trip to try to flee away from god and so from the outside we were like why would you pay to flee from god's presence because you can't do that it doesn't make it make sense but your emotions your feelings you acting off of that can cause you to uh, do some really crazy or silly things when you find yourself wanting to react off emotion and it will happen Take a moment to just breathe and try to make a decision after thinking about it some more. Something else that I really liked was that in the commentary it said this. It says that nevertheless, when you run away from the Lord, you never, and I mean never, get to where you're going. 
and you always pay your own fare. But when you go to the Lord, when you go the Lord's way, you're you not only get to where you are going, but He provides the fare. And in Psalms 139, um, it says, that, "Oh, where can I flee from your presence?" So that is a rhetorical question, as in, there's nowhere you can go where God's not gonna be. So we can take a lesson from Jesus' book of life, of His life to be obedient to the call of God, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's uncertain, even if we don't want to do it or don't feel like doing it, which I feel that. But there's a lot of good that comes from obedience, but there's a lot of growth and uncomfortable growth in doing so too. That is all that I got from chapter one of Jonah. This video is almost 30 minutes long, that's crazy. But there's so much goodness in this story that I did not know as a child, but you know, in scripture it talks about, you know, as a child you, you drink milk, but as an adult you no longer can like, can, um, be sustained by the milk that you drank as a child. You're older, you're wiser, you're more mature, you gotta be able to be in the word in a deeper way. So I hope that you enjoyed going through chapter one with me. Again, if you have any takeaways that I didn't mention or I missed while I was reading through chapter, feel free to comment them down below. I would, be, I would love to read them. And I'm looking forward to diving into the next couple chapters of Jonah with you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a nice little thumbs up. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel below with the red subscribe button so you can officially join the Hey Fam, which is the community on my channel. While you're down there, go ahead and ring the little bell too so you get notified exactly when I upload new videos, which is once a week. And hope you have a great rest of your weekend or a great rest of your week whenever you're watching this. And I will catch you in the next Bible study video. <laughs> Bye.